Hello folks! Today is the day that I'm going to make something just blowed my mind the first time I seen it. I used to go to Sturgis Motorcycle Rally out in South Dakota and the uh, first time I was there I saw people eating this thing and I'm like what the hell is that? It was a taco but it didn't have a regular taco shell. It had what they call Indian fry bread. Indian fry bread was like it's like a, a a fried, soft, basically it's a bread dough that's fried in hot oil. That's all these chicks running around eating these things in their latex bikinis and stuff. And I'm like, hmm, what the hell is going on there? So I start talking to one. I'm like, well, what? you know, I like to get to the bottom of things. I don't care about the stuff on the top. Show me your bottom. Because, eh. you know, the bottom is where it's at. The bottom, in a lot of things, dictate what you're looking at. Like pizza, for example. Look at the crust, okay? Toppings may be the same, but if the crust made different, that makes it a whole different pizza. New York, Chicago, it's all different crusts. So, she shows me her bottom. And uh, I'm like, huh, that's pretty cool. So I went to the place, ordered one. And I was trying to see how they made it, but they weren't making, I guess the dough they made was brought in that morning. They just rolled them out and fried them up. So I couldn't really tell what was in them. But I struggled. I wanted to make it at home. And I, I, I did. I, I tried many different recipes. And something came across my mind and I'm like, well, what if I do this? What if, I wonder how that'll turn out. And when I did it, it was like, oh. Because it never seemed to fail me. Whenever I'd make these fry breads, they'd go hard. You know, like day after, two days later, they're hard. This seemed to soften them up. And everybody knows. You like a soft bottom. So I'm going to make some fried bread. I'm going to bring you guys along. So you guys check it out. And you guys might freak out when you see what I put in this thing. Ah well, I know it's kind of hard to see. The first thing we're going to start out with is three cups of bread flour. Pretty much got to use bread flour in this thing because if you use all-purpose flour, you're going to be needing it forever for it to come out halfway decent. Then, we need about a, a teaspoon and a half of salt. Next thing we need is some yeast. A teaspoon of yeast. That's all you need. Now, the next thing may freak you out a bit. This is what I come up with. Keep these things pliable. I think it gives it a little twang, too. That is, is about an ounce of softened cream cheese. Philly cream cheese. Gotta throw that in there. Now, let's put on our beater bar. And we're gonna do kind of like you do with biscuits. We're gonna mix that up and get that cream cheese incorporated with that flour. Okay, after about a minute or two of spinning that around. Got to get that cream cheese incorporated with that flour. Now we take off the mixing beater and we put on the bread hook. Spool her up. And now we're going to add just shy a cup and a half of water. Now the water, you want it warm enough to be able to break down that cream cheese, but you don't want it so hot where it'll kill your yeast. So about 115 degrees. If it's a little hotter, bowl will cool it down. We're going to let that spool up for a while. Once when it comes together, you're going to want to spool it up for about 10 minutes. Let this thing run on low. Right now you want to make sure it comes together. I always try and start a little light on the water because it's a lot easier to add more water than it is flour. Flour gets kind of messy. Water is kind of easy to put in. I'm thinking it's going to need a little more water. Yeah. I think she's going to be a little dry. Can you feel it? Maybe not. Let that run. We're going to let that run. Let's see what happens. Okay. We let that dough spool up for about eh, eight minutes. I don't think it's going to get any better. She's pretty good. You don't want this dough sticky, what they call a, a sticky dough. You want to have it to have a pretty decent moisture content. I need this by hand a few times. I'm going to add a little, a little extra flour to it so it don't stick to my hands as much. Just add a little extra flour. Let's 
There we go. We're going to want 10 equal portions. And I like to get kind of technical with that, so I'm going to weigh the whole thing. Should come out to be about 880 grams, roughly. It should be around 880. 875, a little short. So I'm going to do uh, 87 grams each dough ball. 87 grams, huh? That's 86 grams, that's close enough. Yeah, you see, decent dough ball. All right, I'm gonna get on this. I'm gonna make a whole bunch of these, and then I'll show you our next step. Just gonna put them in a plastic bag. But before we put them in the plastic bag, we're gonna make sure that bag is well lubed on the inside. The lube on the bag will do two things. It'll make it easier to get out. It won't stick to the bag. And when you go to press it down in the dough press, it won't stick to that as much either. We got our dough balls in our well lubed bag, sealed up. We're gonna let them sit for about 15 minutes before we do anything with them. Meanwhile, while we're doing that, we're gonna get our pan ready for frying. We got a little bit over, close to a half inch of oil in there. Not quite. Our target temp on this oil is 325, 350. We don't want to get it too hot. Okay, let's see where we're at here. We're good. Now let's press out a dough. Okay, let's get a dough ball out. Now I want you to look. I don't know if you can tell how glistening that is. That's because of the oil that we put in. And yes, we're using the tortilla press hack. Now we're going to take and just pat that down a little bit. Place this on the top. Give her a little easy push down. Turn it 180. Another easy push. And then we're going to squeeze her out. It's not quite round. I, mean, I can round it out if I want, but I'm not going to. I want to explain a couple things before I put this in because it tends to go kind of quick. When I put this in the pan, I'm going to go away from me. I'm going to drop it away so if any grease splatters, I don't get hit with it. Also, it fries quick. So you don't want to leave it on the first side too long because it will bubble up. And when it bubbles up, it makes it hard to fry the other side. So you want to flip it over kind of quick, maybe within 15 seconds or so, and it will bubble up. And when you get the bubbles and it doesn't seem to be frying good, just press it down with your spatula. You'll hear air coming out, steam or whatever. So I'm going to pull this off. Let's show you here. Show you how easy. See how that, how that comes off real easy? I'm going to lay it in the pan. Away from me. See that? Now, you don't want to leave it in there too long. You can see the bubbles starting to come already. See them bubbles forming? Go ahead and flip it over real quick. And then see how it's got, I had some debris in my pan. I scraped up, but that'll come off. The whole thing is kind of puffing up. Okay, let's flip it over again. I don't like that debris on there, but like I said, that'll come off. See how it's puffed up? It's gonna be hard to fry. Let's push it down. We're letting all the steam out of there. one's usually the worst one so we'll do one more yeah don't look bad all except for the debris on there that debris will come off we'll throw it in the, in the tortilla holder let's make another one grab up a lube ball everybody likes lube balls press down gently give her half spin crank it down that one's a little, a little more symmetrical. Let her cook. Not too long. You don't want a bunch of bubbles forming. Hopefully this one will come out cleaner. Won't have so much char debris on it. I scraped the pan after I put the oil in it, which 
was stupid. All right, let's pull that flipper over real quick. Not as much debris on it. It's a lot better. Flip her over. Smash her down. Good enough. Take a look at that, guys. Indian fry bread. No sugar in there because it browns up fine without it. I'm going to get busy. I'm going to make the rest of these, and I'll show you the pile after I get done. Okay, here's our Indian flatbread. We're in cool-down mode, which gives us a chance to make our taco seasoning. And you know what we're doing? Instant taco seasoning. Taco meat from a can. You seen that before? We're using it today. Fast, fun, easy. I heated up my instant taco meat. Now here's the cool thing about this. You know, most people will put your taco meat and filling right in the middle. But that's the thing about being able to use flatbread. You're not just subject to leaving it there in the middle. You can spread it up the side. That way, when you bite into it, you get a bite of everything. Every time. See how that is right there? Spread it up the sides, just like that. I'll put a little Tostitos cheese sauce in there. Hopefully give it a little kick. Actually, I'm just going to pour that in there. There we go. And now we'll spread it up the side. Got me a little Monterey Jack and Colby. I was going to put some tomatoes on there. But that sauce has got plenty of tomato taste in it. Yeah, it would have made it look pretty, but what the heck. There's your Indian flatbread taco right there. I'm going to have some of that. All right. I don't know if I'm need any hot sauce just yet. We're going to find out. Oh, man. I had some fallout backside. Got some jizz on me. I do believe it could stand a little sauce. Let's put a little... El Yucateco green on there. Beautiful. Right on the money. Mmm. Tell you what, that taco in a can, it's hard to beat. I mean, it's instant. No slaving, no messing up a bunch of pans. Mmm. It's hard to beat that. Mmm. Indian flatbread makes some of the best tacos. Mm, taking me back to Sturgis, South Dakota. All the leather teeny wearing babes running around eating these things. Oh yeah, they were gobbling them down. You would be surprised how many of them girls came down there without a dime to their name. They would put an ad in the paper looking for a ride to Sturgis. Some big hairy biker dude to pick them up. They'd have some good times going down, and then uh, while they were there, they'd hope they'd pick up a bartending job or a stripper job or something, make some cash. But when they first get there, they're uh, pretty stressed out, looking ways to make money. They want to, they need to eat, whatever. They'll do pretty much anything for the cash. Not that I would know such a thing, but they're definitely starving when they get there. So they're real desperate, these girls, bikers. They don't they don't spend a whole lot of money getting down there. They keep their money in case their bike breaks down, they need some parts, keep their money for fuel, all that stuff. They don't, don't eat a whole lot. By the time they get down there, they're starving. They're ready to do anything to get a bacon double cheeseburger. <laughs> we love you a long time for bacon double cheeseburger. See how this one is? I'm leaving it flat. That's how they serve it in Sturgis, kind of flat. You eat it like that. Mm -mm. All right, guys. Now get a hankering. Make some Indian fry bread. You'll like it. Talk up. Appreciate it. I'm thinking of these chicks walking around their bikinis saying, Sir, 
Could you buy me a hot dog at the hot dog stand? I said, I'll give you a hot dog. You got one!